Imagine if you came across a puzzle and your first impression would be... Well, I don't think this puzzle is actually for me. Or it may be a little bit too boring for me because there's not much going on to it. Then you realize that this is one of those examples in which there is a lot going on in each one of the pieces. And that is exactly what happened to me the other day when I found the puzzle called Swell Sailing, which is part of the Coast Lines series by Holtzen New Zealand, containing paintings by Ron Gribble, a New Zealand artist. And this particular puzzle is a painting of the Waitamata Harbour, which is the main access to Auckland and the North Shore by sea. In the background, we have Rangitoto, which is the youngest island here in New Zealand. It emerged from the sea, from the bottom of the sea, literally overnight, 600 years ago, from a volcanic explosion, and is now a bird sanctuary in Auckland. And to the right, we have North Head or Mangawika, which is another volcanic formation from around 50,000 years ago. I will also show you how I would frame my puzzles using only paper and craft glue. So without any further delays, please enjoy this video with me and I'll see you in the comment session. Enjoy! You know, guys, I keep saying this all the time about Holtzons, and I know I have a bias because it is made here in New Zealand, but I can tell you I have never come across a Holtzon puzzle that was of bad quality. And this one has a couple of very interesting variations in terms of shapes and also in terms of the patterns on the pieces, as I explained previously. So this would be a very interesting jigsaw puzzle to take along today. And for those interested, this is 1.5 millimeters thick, so it's not the thickest puzzle out there. And it is also roughly at around 30 millimeters wide each. This is the one of the largest pieces. And no surprises that this puzzle in particular was uh, kind of very tricky to sort. So what I end up we ended up doing was I separated everything by shape initially and then I kept all the colors that were kind of similar in the same tray and of course if you have a look here red is gonna be one of the colors that literally stood out so spotting all the red pieces was super easy so I had to do that first Here, for example, in some of those uh, trays, I have only the sky pieces. And then on another tray, I had all the pieces that had any traces of green or that sort of light purple color or anything that was not blue. And one of the things that I really wanted to do, I don't know if you guys do exactly the same thing, so please let me know in the comments. Another thing that I really wanted to do was to separate the pieces and organize them on my tray based on texture. However, that proved to be very tricky. I would rather see the shape of the pieces first and then the color and then any other information on the pieces. So I didn't go that far as to uh, organize them by texture. For this puzzle, I wanted to be a little bit more adventurous. I didn't want to focus on anything in particular, but I decided to focus on whatever was more obvious first. So I decided to tackle the red parts, then the yellower or beige parts, and then the green parts of the uh, North Head and also uh, Rangitoto. But nothing in particular, and I promised myself this time that Whatever I came across, I would just try to focus on those uh, parts and then just take it from there. So for this puzzle in particular, no plans. So after looking through my uh, trays, I decided to start with the red parts first. And uh, to be honest, by the time that I started the puzzle, I couldn't remember exactly what I was uh, working on and I wasn't looking at the picture, the box or the poster. So at this stage, I was kind of trying to figure out what 
this red part was. And also all of those tiny little parts with red and white. And eventually I figured out that they were uh, buoys. They were also a dinghy. And another one which had the white stripes was uh, the lighthouse. Which, by the way, it's not exactly, does not exactly look like that in the white amata. So here I'm looking for a tab that has that white part on it. A blue tab, a blue piece with a white part crossing right on its head there. Oh, look at this one. This one has all the uh, all the details that we are after. Let's see. Oh yeah, look, perfect. And if you are an avid puzzler like myself, who is always trying to find new and interesting ways of interacting with your puzzles, have you guys noticed? that when you start a puzzle that has pretty much one major color, like this one here, has mostly blue, right? Have you noticed that in the beginning you would not pay attention to the color changes, to the very subtle color changes, but as you progress, you become so in tune with every single color change of the puzzle that even you get like, oh, did I actually recognize this? difference between this light blue and this light blue with a very small tone or variation of green tones to it. Let me know in the comments if you are like me and as soon as you start a puzzle all the color, the subtle color changes become second nature to you. I need to find a piece that had this light almost like a jeans, jeans color that goes like that and then one part of it seems to have like a white part. Came across this one here, which seems to have one side that's white, but I needed the other side as well. But let's try this one, see if it's gonna work or not. There you go. Let's do it. And it is working. However, that part is not there, so I was tricked by the puzzle. This is either a coincidence or the puzzle itself is really smart. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a really perfect example of puzzle that we may very quickly underestimate, isn't it? Because the picture seems to be pretty simple. And, you know, if you have solved many jigsaw puzzles before, you know that oil painting and pastel particularly, particularly are normally extremely challenging when it comes to uh, puzzle imagery. So um, I very quickly realized that this was not going to be a, a straightforward puzzle, but, but it turned out to be very challenging, which is exactly what we need. I have spoken about this before in this particular puzzle. Uh, there are so many areas in the um, in the texture department that it made the whole experience even more interesting for me than all this carnival of colors. Another thing which you may have heard me saying before in previous videos, and I still think it is extremely valid, is when you come across parts that are extremely challenging, like this part here, for example, I tend to see every single piece as if they were people, as if they had personality. Like this one is wearing a beige belt around its waist. And there you go. So that was all I was focusing on. This other example here has a white belt on its waist. And the right shoulder is quite short and sharp and it's got an elongated wing going there on, on the right side. So again, it all becomes, it all makes a lot more sense to you when you're working with pieces like this, if you give each one of them a personality. So this one is going to have short left shoulder, elongated, but the leg goes outwards a little bit. 
So I'm going to be focusing on finding one piece that has potentially that beige line here, but it also has that the left side is pointing outwards in all directions. And yep, got it. Now I will be looking for pieces that potentially have that beige right there on the very edge of the head. There and now this one here as well will have like a almost like a, a, a pair of sunglasses, beige sunglasses crossing the head. And this one will have some right just on the top, just a small hint of beige. I think I found it. Yeah. So that's got a beige head, but it's the whole head is beige. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But let's see. Let's try. So we should go there. Uh, yep, it worked. So the whole head was actually beige. The whole head was beige, not only it, it didn't have only like a sunglass. You can find this one with the horizontal horizontal features and you will have like a white line on one side just crossing from top to bottom or from side to side that white line okay so when looking here I can really see one that has that line that I want right there so let's try this piece here and perfect awesome. white sunglasses I found a couple of options could be this one so let's see nope. this one the whole head is white so I had this one which could potentially be it uh, yep And because the um, pieces for this puzzle were sort of um, slightly different from each other, finding the white sky pieces in their exact location was not that difficult. But I have to say that sometimes I had to use a measurement. I had to, to measure those shoulders to be able to distinguish one piece from another instead of trying every single piece in every single uh, place or available spot. I thought it was a lot easier just to measure um, some of the, um, the, the shoulders, as I call them, and then finding the right piece was not difficult. And this, my friends, is Rangitoto Island, which is also in the Waitamata Harbour. It is now a beautiful sanctuary for birds and small lizards here in New Zealand. And it is one of the most beautiful bushwalk experiences you can have. So if you come to New Zealand, make sure you go to Rangitoto Island. There are incredible cave formations there. You know, I was really looking forward to uh, getting to this part with the Torpedo Museum, Manga Wika, and also Rangitoto because I have a lot of footage about it. I live literally five minutes away from this uh, mount. It's facing Rangitoto, which is across the, uh, the canal. And this whole area uh, which surrounds those volcanoes is called the Waitamata Harbour. Now, if you ever come to New Zealand, you must go to Mangawika or North Head, which is in Devonport. So you have to get the ferry in Auckland City to Devonport and you can walk and you can immerse yourself in historical World War I and II tunnels that were built that were built from 1840s onwards and then used as prisons. And there is so much for you to see in North Head and uh, for you to enjoy. You can come and spend a day here if you like by the water. It's pretty safe and you're going to have 
a beautiful time surrounded by nature. So this is um, the view from North Head or Mangawika. And if you look across the water, you can see Rangitoto, which is the youngest island here in New Zealand. So I highly recommend you come and visit these places. And that is the Torpedo Museum location, which is right on the bottom of North Head. And I highly recommend you check it out as well. It is uh, one of those museums about uh, the maritime history of New Zealand. There's a lot to see and to enjoy in this museum, including old uh, boats and dinghies and lots of miniature ships. So you must check it out. Everything is too far. I guess the um, I would call this um, uh, yacht as the central piece of the puzzle because it is by far the largest element uh, followed by the red dinghy. So putting that uh, uh, yacht together was super fun, and I had this piece with the um, the life saving thingy, and I didn't know where to put it, and then I finally realized it went on the back of the yacht. And again, this parts where there is a lot of texture in the pieces were by far the most enjoyable parts of it. Not to mention that the colors, the tones of blue here are very vibrant and very beautiful. And again, sometimes it feels like the people doing the puzzles, the, you know, making the puzzles in the factory, it feels like they intentionally add elements in each piece that will provide us the necessary information here pretty much every single tab has a line crossing through it so working through this part was also super fun okay my friends and that is the very last piece of this second hand jigsaw puzzle and yes there were no pieces missing so I'll let you admire this for a little bit the Waitemata Harbor and um, let's have a closer look now at some of the highlights so that was North Head Rangitoto in the background there's a beautiful lighthouse there there's a sailing uh, ship and now the centerpiece of this puzzle is the uh, fishing yacht now in front of the yacht we have a red dinghy that appears to be abandoned <laughs> And just have a final look at the textures and differences between the areas of this puzzle. I could easily say that this is several puzzles in one with very distinct and different areas to explore. Now I have mentioned as well on another video that I don't normally frame my puzzles, my finished puzzles, because I don't have enough space in my house. But this particular puzzle I've decided to um, save for another day. So what I've done is I've asked my sister to help me turn, her, turn it, the, the puzzle uh, upside down so I could work on the back of it. And I knew from the very beginning that I did not want to deal with plastics because I had a lot of familiarity and I've used this sort of craft glue many times before. I know it is really strong and is really durable, water-based, and it says it is non-toxic, so it should be safe to use. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to get a nice piece of paper, like the, um, you know, the butcher paper that we buy in rolls most of the time. I have a big roll here, so I cut one piece exactly the same size as the puzzle. And I added glue line by line on the back of this puzzle. So every single piece of the puzzle had a little bit of glue on it. So I literally just drew some lines using uh, the glue and then I very slowly was gluing line by line. I didn't apply the glue to the whole lot all at once, otherwise I will end up with a lot of trouble. So what I've done is, as you can see here, I applied a couple of lines and then spread the paper on top. Then folded that paper again at the very limit when there was no more glue and then started again a couple more lines. And this way it worked perfectly. And the good thing about paper or gluing your, 
your puzzles with paper is that it becomes a lot more flexible for you to use later. Let's say you want to attach it to a cardboard, for example. That, this way you can actually use glue to do that. If you had the plastic in the back, it would be a little bit more complicated. But that's pretty much what I've done. And it took me, this whole process took me about 10 minutes. And after that, I put weights on and let it rest overnight. So this is what I came up with. Alright everybody, so that was the very end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you came out of it with something learned today. I know there, were, there weren't many tips today for you on this video, but at least you got something that is slightly different from what it's been showcased on YouTube um, recently on other puzzle channels. So I wanted to sort of bring awareness to the fact that we are so quick nowadays because we have so many options, obviously, because we are so quick to judge um, puzzles. We are really quick eh, to say, look, this puzzle is just too boring for me. I don't like it. I have better puzzles to solve. So if you come across a puzzle that may look interesting in terms of textures and colors and, you know, regardless of the theme that you may or may not like, make sure you give it a try. So at least you tried once. Hey, there are so many puzzles that have mountains, lots of sky, lots of snow that a lot of people overlook and they prefer to, to solve cryptic puzzles, for example, or gradient puzzles, as opposed to solving those uh, puzzles with lots of sky, lots of mountains, lots of water, as you've seen in this video today. Give it a try and let me know how you went. Now, another point that I wanted to, um, to raise as well, which I have mentioned in this video, is the fact that when you are looking for pieces on trays or on piles of puzzles, focus on one aspect of the pieces. For example, does it have a white line or sunglasses uh, in, in one of the tabs? Does it have an, an elongated wing but very short shoulders, for example? Or does it have an interesting texture in the middle? You, instead of thinking about all of those, those details when looking for certain pieces, focus initially on only one aspect, okay? So think about it like this. Oh, this piece here that I'm looking for may potentially have a white line crossing right on top of the one of the tabs. So focus on just that. And once you narrow down a couple of those pieces that have that line in one of the tabs, then you can narrow down to other aspects of the puzzle. Because normally, when we go back to the, uh, you know, we had a look, we decided what's missing, and we decided what the piece may look like. Once you go to your trays and start looking, you're going to be thinking about all of those details all at once, and it's just not going to help. You will going you're gonna end up going back and forth because you were trying to remember those things so think about one one aspect first and then you start narrowing down to all the details of the piece and remember treat them as if they were person each one of them with their own personality even if the pieces have no not much variation in terms of shape but now in terms of the fun that i had with this puzzle i can easily give it a nine out of ten because I really enjoyed every aspect of it. In terms of quality, for me, that is what a jigsaw puzzle should look like. For what I'm looking for on puzzles, which is great experience, difficulty, and quality of the print, I can easily say this is a 9 out of 10 jigsaw puzzle, which happens to have been uh, made here in New Zealand, which is another good point. If I recommend you try puzzles like this, absolutely, please do have a go on a puzzle that has mostly one color, has a lot of sky, or has, or has a lot of uh, bodies of water, because there will be some trick to it 
there will be something to it that will make it very challenging. In terms of time, some of you uh, like having uh, an idea of how long you take to finish your puzzles. I have no idea. I do not look at a clock when I'm doing puzzles, so it may take several days. I really don't care how fast I solve a puzzle because for me, it is about the unique relationship that you create with the puzzle, with the imagery in the puzzle. It's nothing to do, this is in my humble opinion, okay? Nothing to do with calculating how fast you can solve a puzzle. So if you ask me how long did you take it, I have no idea. Several times, several hours a day within several weeks. So it could be 20, 30, 40 hours. I have no idea because I haven't actually checked. And this time I only recorded the most important parts of the puzzle because as you know, a lot of us are getting really tired of time lapses and things like that. So I'm trying to bring you something a little bit more consistent and a little bit more interesting for you to watch with some kind of value as well in intention. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a comment, hit the like buttons there for me if you enjoyed this sort of video. And if you want to watch more videos like this, check this playlist right here. And if you want to see my collection of jigsaw puzzles where I talk about them, quality, you know, all sorts of details, sizes and things like that, check this playlist right here. And I'll see you in my next adventure. Bye for now. Cheers.